right guys welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to make mesh fences now these can be used in any type of game from Malifaux to Warhammer uh, to War Machine Batman probably even ball action so if you want to know how to very easily make fences keep watching what you're going to need is a pair of scissors and a hot glue gun uh, this stuff is mesh netting you can get this from garden centers it's a couple of pounds for quite a large quantity, a couple of meters or so. Um, so you need some of that. You need some sharp sand. This is picked up from a builder's merchant. You can get a humongous bag for about £1.50. Uh, you need some offcuts of sprues. Uh, these are from the GW Ruins kits. Uh, but you can just use straight standard sprue. You could use um, straws. Uh, you could even use uh, coffee stirrers and things like that. And I've got a couple of other little random bits and pieces to add in. We've got some decorative stones, you can pick stones up from your neighbour's drive. Uh, we've got some cardboard, this is the back of a Weetabix box, and of course we've got some PVA glue. We are going to need some paint, but not at this stage at the moment, so let's get started. Right, so the first stage is you want your cardboard. As I said, I've got Weetabix. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue onto this side uh, because it's shiny, it doesn't absorb the glue as well as what this side does and this side would actually force it to curl upwards so what we're going to do is we're going to do two nice long sections to get sort of three or four posts of fencing in there we're going to cut it in an irregular shape so you can blend it into your battlefield and I'm actually going to make two uh, during this tutorial at the same time now obviously be careful with scissors you could use a standing knife for this but scissors are the quickest and easiest way to do this and as I said just nice irregular shape doesn't even need to be very big at all. And the joy of the cardboard is it's nice and rounded and flat as well. So we'll then cut the second piece and you know what I'm going to cheat massively and just use the same edge there. This one is going to be slightly off-centered when it's done, but that's the joy of having ruined fences, isn't it? So there we go. Now the next stage, what we're going to do is we're going to use either the coffee stirrers or the bits of sprue from GW um, or plastic sprue in general. And what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue three or four posts along here. So I'll get the hot glue gun warmed up and we'll come back in a second. Right, so the glue gun is nearly warm enough now. The reason I'm using the hot glue gun as opposed to PVA uh, or super glue or anything is because as you can appreciate, they are quite small pieces to glue on. Some of them may not sit straight or anything like that. Uh, and the hot glue gun uh, is very fast at sticking things in place. It's very, very sturdy as well. Now obviously we are going to give this a bit of support uh, once we've put the posts on by putting rubble and such around it. So. This should be about ready. There we go, as you can see it sticks pretty fast. I think we'll stick the smaller one there. And then we'll do a bigger one at this side. There we go, that's that one nearly stuck. We'll do this one as well. And one in the middle. And you know what? I don't think I want the third one that high. Now I don't have any clippers here. Probably not a good idea to do this. But there we go cut one in half with a pair of scissors. So we'll do the last one on the end there. Now that's fine but if you push on them they're probably going to snap off pretty easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some decorative stones. I've had these for years. What we're going to do is literally put a couple of beads of hot glue around the bottom of each one and then just put a couple of stones 
on there just to support the posts in place. In fact, I've probably done that way too quick because the glue is now nearly so set. Let's put a bit more on there. There we go, and it just helps keep them all in place a little bit. And you don't have to use, like I said, stones like this if you've got bits in your bits box that you fancy using instead, or some slate or something off your neighbour's drive or your own allotment. Anything works just to look, make this look as though the kind of you know embedded in the ground kind of maybe come away a little bit and then we'll do the last one there as well and there we go so the next stage it's going to be to add the mesh fencing. Right, so the next stage is to cut the mesh fencing. Now I've just done this one off camera, but as you can see I've cut it just over the width of the distance between the two posts. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue it in place around about there. So the quickest and easiest way to do it is to put a bead of glue along the back. So using the hot glue gun once again, we're just going to put a little bit of glue down the back of the posts. And that's the disadvantage of hot glue, you often get strings of glue, but it's fine, we can pull it all off in a little bit. It's also worth putting a bead of glue along the base just to sink the bottom of it into it as well. So let's get this one on. I think it was that way. And then it's worth as well just adding a little bead along just to neaten it in. Now if you go up onto the fence here it doesn't make too much of a difference because we are going to cover this later on in a bit of sand just to bulk it out a little bit and make it look a little bit fuller. And there we go, that's the first one. We'll now do this one. I'm going to do this one in much the same way. Try and work a bit quicker here though. And I've already pre-cut this one. and we'll just let that set for a moment or two and then what we'll do is we'll quickly run a bead of glue along the edge again like I said just tying it in you know it's been gonna have been here a while it's gonna be buried in the earth a little bit so the hot glue just helps kind of give that little bit of a ridge to where it's been buried and sunk in and just put a bit on the top there And there we go, we're nearly done with the assembly at this point. Now before we uh, go on and base these up properly, what I want to do is just add a few little extra bits of details. So I've getting a couple of bits and pieces from my bits box, uh, some leftovers from the GW Ruins, and just some bits of wall and things like that. So we're literally just going to glue them on, kind of, you know, willy nilly, just to add a little bit more depth and detail to the pieces. So just a little bit of wall in there, things like that, 
just to help add that little bit extra detail and it's better than it just being sand and gravel I mean sand and gravel is fine but obviously you want just that little bit more go that inch further really make them stand out and there we go so what we'll do now is we're going to crack out the PVA glue and the sand and get these covered up in sand and based up properly right so the next stage is to base these up and we're going to use some PVA glue and we're going to paint all the cardboard up don't be frightened if you get uh, glue up on the mesh on the rocks on the posts I've literally thrown this together and if you throw it together like this it actually looks in my opinion more authentic it, you know it's battered it's been bombed it's seen warfare you know it wants to look very messy so we're literally just going to slap on the PVA glue don't worry if you look like I say if you get it on the rocks where you've used the uh, hot glue gun to glue the mesh onto the base as well get all that covered up and that just adds to the extra details and effects so oh, that one's come loose and what we'll do is we'll bomb this with the sand once we've gotten it all glued up there there we go so we'll move this one out of the way and like I said this is build, just builder's sharp sand which I've gotten from a builder's merchant I paid pound fifty for a bag two year ago when I got back into the hobby and I've based and done all my terrain with this single bag so what we're going to do is literally just cover it in sand just chuck the sand on and give it a bit of a tap you know don't be generous with this I mean be generous with it don't be too thin with it you know really get it all on there and give it a tap and there we go we'll uh, let that dry overnight I'm going to do the other one now uh, and we'll come back tomorrow when we can start painting this right so it's 4.30 in the morning I can't sleep I've been up all night so what am I going to do I'm going to finish my terrain off so here it is and we're going to use a couple of different sprays to get the job done this is grey primer from the pound shop and what we're going to do is cover the entire models, models, scenery with this. It's fantastic because it's nice and dark. Don't be friendly with it. Good old core. It's a lovely dark grey, which means it works fantastic as a base core. It's cheap and it does most of the work for you, which is fantastic. and pretty much like that the job is nearly done however I cheat a little bit this is standard grey primer from Wilkinson's and what we're going to do is just dab it on lightly on the grey bits that we're going to use as the gravel and just give it a, a very very light dab spray like that what it does is it just sits on the highest raised pieces as you can see it pretty much essentially dry brushes it itself so we'll do this one as well It's very hard spraying with the left hand when you're not used to it. There you go. And then what we're going to do is just add a little bit of silver. You can get silver in the pound shop, but I've got some left over from my neck runs from Army Painter. I think this one's silver. Yep, that's silver. You can just do the fences with a bit of silver there. Now, yes, I spray on top of my wheelie bin. Whatever. I 
and there we go so we'll let that dry and we'll have a look a closer look at that in the light inside right so now they're all sprayed up you can see I've actually used the uh, spray paints to actually get a little bit of texture and shading on there which just helps when you start to brighten it up now what we're going to do next is we are going to dry brush uh, all of the pillars and the bits of rubble and everything and I'm just going to use some cheap acrylic paint in grey uh, that I managed to get hold of from uh, I think I got this one from Hobbycraft but you can get it in B&M, you can get it in Home Bargains um, loads and loads of cheap places like that now if you don't know how to dry brush all you do is you get a little bit of paint on the edge of your brush just some on there and then what you do is you wipe it off so that it appears dry on your tissue paper like that and then what we're going to do is just going to quickly drag the brush over all the relevant parts like that so all them walls and you can see there it's actually starting to highlight especially the uh, studs then we'll do the bigger rocks in that colour as well and basically just go over it very very lightly and quickly and it just helps pick out the surface details on them all and we'll do the same with the other one and it's not like you're painting this it's literally like you just dragging the brush over very very quickly and like I said it just picks up the raised areas on there as well especially like the street light there the studs and the edges of each of the bollards there as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to use exactly the same technique but this time with white so I'll just get some white on my brush but this time what we're going to do is we are going to go over the entire base of this as well and as you can see there with the white just helps pick off all of the rubble and all of the gritty bits of the sand as well let's get a bit more white on my brush And what you want to do is you want to make sure you do both sides with this and you can go as heavy or as light as you like depending on you know how you feel it's looking so I'm still going to put a bit more on there So what I'll do is I'll get the other one done up and we'll come back in a moment or two. Right, so the next stage is we're just going to add a little bit of texture and weathering to it uh, in the form of dry brushing with this acrylic copper. Now the acrylic copper I actually managed to pick up from B&M. So we're just going to use the same technique again of dry brushing basically and just add a little bit uh, of extra colour and texture. So again, just, you know, literally kind of thrown it on the mesh on the pillars there as well now it doesn't matter if it's a little bit thick or heavy because we're still going to go back in with some silver in a few moments as well so let's do a little bit over here that's some to there as well and we'll do the same with the other one and it just helps add the rust effect to the iron and sheet fencing and get a bit more and you can see I'm literally just being really really rough and quick with this this is all it takes it's very very simple and effective now I'm going to get a bit more and I'm going to do the back uh, and we'll come back after I've done that right so there we go we've had a little bit of weathering to it with the gold unfortunately you can't quite see it so let me turn the lamp off 
there. You can see the gold and the weather in there on the beams and the bits of wall. But the next stage is to apply some silver and that's just to go over the gold and uh, unfortunately I don't think you can see it on the camera, it doesn't come up very well on the screen um, but there is quite a fair amount of gold on there uh, or copper so what we're going to do is the silver is just going to take the edge off the copper uh, on the edges um, and just give it that kind of you know chinked metal effect as well so we're going to apply the same method in the form of just dry brushing but this time we're just going to go lightly over each of the gold areas that we've just done just to kind of blend it in a little bit and take away from some of the gold and it literally doesn't need much because it, most of it will actually just shine through just pick up the edges quite well. We'll do the next one. And again, I don't think you can quite see it on the camera, but the silver's just picked up all the edges along here while still leaving the heavy gold dry brush on display. And just do some more silver on the edge. And again just the more layers you add the more detail and effect it gives. So you can even add browns into the bases and obviously dry brush that up with yellows and whites um, but now what we're going to do to just to add that tiny bit more is we're going to actually add a little bit of uh, flock uh, or static grass rather. So going back to the PVA that you had earlier on I'm just going to dab a couple of bits here and there so we'll put some along the front there and a little bit down the back there and then what you want to do is sprinkle it on pat it in a little bit and just tap it off back into the tub and the same with that side there as well right so there we go that is both pieces now complete I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to show you but you can see from this distance there's a little bit of gold in there some silver and some white uh, the base itself, although it is plain grey, uh, I've chose to do that so that it ties in with the rest of my gaming mats. Like I said earlier, you could even do this in brown and dry brush it up from brown depending on what your terrain is. You could even do it all in green. I've added the little bit of static grass on there just to try and, you know, break the, th uh, the, the base up a little bit and again helps it tie in. So we'll just have a quick zoom in and have a look. And there you go, you can see obviously all the silver and the bits of gold all still dry brushed in there as well. It's really hard to actually see in, in the netting here but there is gold and silver tied into the netting as well and if we go back again you can see on the wall section uh, and the pillars there that each of those has a certain amount of dry brushing in there as well. But yeah I'm quite pleased with the way these have turned out. These are very very quick to make. Now I've done them in well bar and dry in time a little over an hour if that so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh please let me know what you think and what other tutorials you would like to see thanks very much for watching guys and we'll see you next time